to kick it away. Short kick here, fielded about the 17. And they'll be set up pretty nicely here as they have it up to the 35-yard line. And you see the clock almost empty, so this is likely the last play in the second quarter. The final shot before break here. Goal. And a double coverage, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Brian Poole. And his guys are going to take over at the 34-yard line. Thanks, Brandon. I'm Larry Ridley, and welcome to our EA Halftime Report. The Rams have struggled with turnovers, so they have to feel lucky they're still in a close game. The Falcons, though, haven't taken full advantage of the turnovers, as we've still got a close game here after two. All right, let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Falcons opening up on offense. Quick pass and catch by Jones. And nobody can stop him on this long touchdown. The Falcons is up now by seven. First and ten. Here the defense will come up with the pick. Rams defense happy to get off the field. Offense now with the shot after the pick. Goff's going to complete the pass. He gone as he sprints into the end zone. We're tied back up at seven. Falcons now late in the second. It's going to be Ryan to Jones on the deep ball. And he'll eventually be brought down, but not before getting to the 37-yard line. Staying late in the half. Freeman's able to haul in the contested pass. And he finds his mark for the score. Falcons up by a touchdown. So that'll do it from here in Orlando. Let's get you back out west to Los Angeles as we rejoin Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. So both teams have their marching orders and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. It's a short kick, taking it to fifth. Now a hit and a loose football. So a teammate picking him up there, that was nearly disaster. And the way that you coach these things, you, you want to make sure you have eyes towards the return guy because you want to make sure that the catch is secured. A lot of teams do that. They have at least one guy. Okay, you're responsible for making sure he secures the catch. He's not always the one that makes the recovery, but he can always sound out the alarm. Hey, ball's on the ground. We've got to get it back. He's fumbled already once, Charles. I'm not going to say that that was in his mind there, but I'm sure that during some of these plays, he is mindful of it. And once you fumble the ball, you know what your team tells you and your coaching staff? Take care of it. Rest of the game. And it does get in your mind a little bit. Sometimes that slows down your effort in trying to get free from tackle. And the defenders know it, too. They sniff that out, don't they? Everybody wants to swarm the football. You know what the rule is. First guy hold up the runner. Everyone else try and get there and strip the ball free. Goff turns and gives to Gurley. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave him with a second and two. Some runs are blocked so well, you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. Goff now looks to throw. Looking right side, and that's complete to Watkins. And he takes it down deep into Atlanta territory. A big play there for L.A. 42 yards. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that, have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. And now a first down following that long gain. Now gone. And this is caught. He's got it. Touchdown, L.A. Robert Woods, a nine-yard touchdown grab. And the Rams are an extra for this football game. 
And now we're all even. Brand new ball game, tie game. In a sense, you're starting over. Tie ball game, everyone's back to even, back to equal. A good job getting back in it. Now the try here for the point after. And we've got a good one brewing. We're all knotted up at 14. The drive summary that time, five plays. And the result for the Rams, a touchdown. This is fielded a couple yards deep. discuss Julio Jones and I know that they've double teamed him a couple times but not a ton whatever they're doing isn't working he's up over 100 yards we'll see how they adjust and when they do that they weaken their defense in other places as well how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this but it's usually not by himself is it right? usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well oh nearly a disaster there on the check down but they'll get it back well, hey, with this window, two teams that we've been talking about this year that really deserve discussion and more discussion as we continue to go. How about the Rams and the Jags and the turnarounds that they've had this year? They have been dramatic. They've been dominating at times when you look at how they've played. I mean, we just saw the Rams, was it, week 15, went to Seattle and decimated the Seahawks to really take over the NFC West. The Jaguars have steadily gotten better throughout the season. I mean, in preseason, the Rams weren't thought of as a team that would make this dramatic a turnaround. Jaguars, they were kind of that trendy, could they be? But they have been for a number of years. This has been something else, and, and my hat is off to both of these organizations. Jones will come now in motion right. And now running right through it. And yeah, brought down, but not before he was able to break the tackle, and the extra effort moves the sticks. Five yards is the pick up there as that extends this drive. They'll throw on first down with Ryan. And Jones has it over the middle. And he's taken down, but not before getting this across midfield and just shy of the 40. A good pick up there of 20 yards. Escaping the pressure right. And incomplete on the deep ball. I like to get a completed pass downfield, but they came off of a momentum play. Big time gain on the previous snap. Came right back and threw one deep, hoping to catch them on their heels. Again on second and ten, it's Ryan. And he comes back with one complete. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. Ryan finding Gabriel for the Falcon first down. And the back goes into motion. On first and 10, it's Ryan. He goes underneath to Freeman. An agile move and a nice game, then dropped at the 25-yard line. Six yards on the pickup, and that'll bring up second down. Ryan will throw again. Buying time to his left. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. Give him 10 that time, escaping the danger, running with it, and picking up a first down. Sanu, the man in motion left. Sanu, the man in motion right. Right. 
From the red zone now, here's Ryan on first down. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here, but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open, and this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. Second and ten now, Ryan eluding the pressure right. And he's got this inside the ten to the nine before he's out of bounds. It'll be a gain of six, and that's going to lead to a third down. He was out there waving his arms, and when you got a quarterback out of the pocket looking for any help, I guess waving the arms is helpful. It certainly is, because you got to get his attention, because now you're in scramble drill. So everyone's adjusting their routes, finding open space, and he found the right spot for the completion. And this is caught for a Falcon touchdown. Julio Jones, his second touchdown of the night, and the Falcons have broken our tie. I know we often laugh, and sometimes we even exalt the guys who are great trash talkers and give us some really funny lines. But the bottom line is absolute production on the field. His second touchdown of the game, and they lead. And now they'll be looking to their defense to preserve that lead. It's up and good, and that'll make the score 21-14. So that one a long 11-play drive. And the Falcons score to cap it off. Here's Bosher to kick it away. It's a short kick, taking it to 15. And this should be the final play before the quarter ends. Time to establish the run game here. Gurley. And he'll go down, and that will do it for the third quarter of action. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Now a draw as Goff gives to Gurley. And that didn't fool anybody. He's going to be dropped in the backfield. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. I know they've got to be careful not to go to the well too often, but it's a fine line, isn't it? Because sometimes, if you've got success, you want to just keep pounding away. But no success there. They rallied quickly on the defensive end. And for the Falcons, five men in the secondary, now on third. From the gun, here he is for his running back. It's complete. And he's got the first down yardage as he brings this up to the 47. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. We always talk about having to read defenses and how complicated that is. Well, this was an excellent read. Read the pressure and got rid of the football before it even got to him for a nice game. And when they're blitzing like that, running back usually a good spot to go with the football? Without a doubt, because he's right in your sight line or he's near you. So you're able to just get it to him easily. And once he gets in space, that's usually a good matchup for him. Not only did we just see back-to-back -back nice games, but we're also seeing the confidence rise, not just for the guy who caught it, but the guy throwing it as well. And these can, these back-to-back -back catches here out of the backfield, that can set something up downfield in a later sequence, right? A lot of the time, it starts to draw the defense closer to the line of scrimmage. So to your point, show this swing pass, show this check down. Maybe later on, you heave one deep when you catch him close to the spot. On first down, it's gone. This will be caught just inside the 10. Only a yard in the completion. It's second and goal. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. Gone. And it's complete. He's got it in the end zone. Touchdown, Rams. See the night. And the Rams are an extra point away from tying up this football game. 
I know Paul Revere talked about by land or by sea, right? You know, one by land, two by sea. He didn't mention air because right now we're seeing a big time performance, aren't we? That's two touchdowns so far in this game. Where'd you pull that one from? And you know, every now and then I actually listened in history class. <laughs> and you're, you're just a scholar all the way around. You're reading all the time. I like that you fit that in the broadcast. <laughs> you know, I just grab a nugget when I can. So that winds up a seven-play drive all told. And it winds up with a touchdown for Los Angeles. Set to go now with the kickoff. These two teams all even again as we continue in this wild fourth quarter. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll probably wish he'd reconsidered here. It will cost him 10 yards as he's down at the 15. Well, conventional football, football 101, tells us if you don't get it back to the 20-yard line on a kickoff return, that's a disappointment. But some of these team special teams coaches, with approval by the head coach, they give them full authority to go ahead and bring it out and try to be aggressive. Almost what we call the green light, red light there. Green light means go, red light means stop. Looks like he had green on that play. On first down, Ryan going for the deep ball. They've got his man complete. That one goes for 36 yards. Well, we haven't been shortchanged on offense. Another fun play to watch there on the deep pass. This game has the feel of, what, a, a turkey bowl, a Thanksgiving day. You know, when we get together this year, when the Davises and the Gardens get together, that's what our playbook's going to look like, like they're drawing them up in the dirt. And so far, it's working for both of them. Fresh set of downs here. Off the play fake to Freeman. It's Ryan. He's airing it out for Samu. And nearly picked it off. He had a chance to come down with that in the end zone, but it'll wind up just being incomplete. The storm windows get a lot tighter near the end zone, don't they? And here's the thing. You already probably have three points in your hip pocket. You force a throw here and give up an interception, you come away with nothing. Especially tough in the middle third of the field where he threw that one. Tie game here. Time starting to run down. The defense really needs to try and keep this game tied, see if they can get the ball back for the offense. to throw again. Ryan. And this is Gabriel on the catch. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. And a nice gain of 21 yards. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me. And I'm going to keep firing. And he'll take this down just shy of the 25-yard line. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, Hard to get them started again occasionally. Well, they don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. Now Ryan. He's going to let it go deep. And this is going to be intercepted. John Johnson with the INT. So how about that for a momentum switch? We're in the fourth quarter, and it's a tight tie... to take the lead right out the window and everything is flipped in the other direction. Now we see Sammy Watkins getting ready to go again on offense. When you're in a zone like he is, what's the conversation like on the sideline between he and his quarterback? Is that a one-way conversation of, hey, just keep getting me the football? It actually is probably a two-way conversation because he wants to keep getting him the football because he's seeing the payoff. 
you know, getting the ball to that guy means yardage, and as we've seen, touchdowns in this game. So I think both of them get more and more excited about the possibilities as things continue on. Yeah, so far it's been over 100 yards and the two scores. And this is caught by Watkins. And they're able to get this one across the 35. So it's Rams football here as we get your reset. They've got it first and 10 as they search for a go-ahead score. Golf. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Woods. And he's finally taken down, but not before getting across midfield and across the 45-yard line. Now Golf. Looking left side for Watkins, and he's got him. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. They drive some people crazy to see those short throws underneath. They've got to find a way to gash the defense downfield. Now on second down, this is Gurley. And he'll be taken down at the 34. Only a yard on the pickup, so a good situation on second and two. It's now third and one. Now the defense going to use the first of their timeouts. That'll leave them with two remaining. We'll be back after this. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. The Rams on third down, just one for three thus far. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. They'll try and pick up the first with Gurley. And he's able to get it to the 31, and that's enough for the first. Three yards there, good enough to keep the drive moving. But he picked up a little bit of yardage there, and now, in this situation, should be in no hurry to run a play really fast. Let the clock wind down. Now Goff will hand this one to Gurley. Space to run past the 20. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10 to the 7. And the Falcons going to use another timeout. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. First and goal, Gurley. Only a yard on the pickup there. Second and goal. Be interesting to see now what they do offensively down near the goal line after not much there that time. As the offensive play caller, that may change your sequence now. Instead of coming right back with a running play, you may have to go to the air. Goff now to throw. He caught. Touchdown. And they broke it our tie here in the final minute. take my man I just don't know another big touchdown late in the game they look like they're in control but still there's a chance block the extra point go down and score kick the extra point themselves they can pull this one out yeah but also on the sideline that just took the lead you got to get your defense ready and the special teams unit for the kickoff coming up yeah you're exactly right got to pull everyone together make sure they're still focused and aren't already celebrating a win so an eight-play drive covering 80 yards. And the result for the Rams, a touchdown. This is taken at his four. And here now come the Falcons. One possession game, <laughs> time very much a factor. How does the offense handle this situation? Well, in a lot of cases, they should be somewhat relaxed. And I know that's counterintuitive because this is a pressure situation. But this is Friday practice every week of the season. You go over this situation, having to go downfield, limited timeouts, got to get out of bounds and keep the drive going and set yourself up. Defensively, you can't just lay back and let them do whatever they want. So it is a cat and mouse deal here. How much pressure will the defense bring? And how much pressure can the offense handle? We're going to find out. And that's going to wind up incomplete. However, we do have a flag down. Let's check in with our referee. 
So the defense helping him out a little bit here late in the fourth. Yeah, and you're exactly right. And when you're the one doing the chasing, you'll take a little help from the other guys, won't you? Looks like the defense in press coverage here. He's going to let it fly. The swing pass caught. And he is into the end zone for a Falcon touchdown. Mohamed Sanu with time running out. And the Falcons are an extra point away from tying the football game. Yes, sir. That touchdown puts him in striking distance. And let me tell you something. Forget being conservative here. Go for it. Go for two. Well, going for it on the road. Want to win it right now? Want to win it right now. Have the momentum. Go ahead and get it done. So now this will be, in all likelihood, to force overtime. Now a final chance to stop it here as a timeout comes in with 10 seconds left in the game. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. So now this will be, in all likelihood, to force overtime. And this is off the left, upright, and through. A trick shot there, but a point is a point. And they're able to get the connection on the long touchdown pass. And that's one of the easiest drive summaries you'll ever see. One play, touchdown. Set to go now with the kickoff. These two teams all even again as we continue in this wild fourth quarter. That's fielded in the end zone. And the decision to bring it out is going to cost him about seven yards all told as he's taken down back shy of the 20. run anticipation here as the D-line sandwiches together. Yet another carry here tonight for Gurley. And he goes across the 20 to the 22. And a timeout comes in. The whistles blow with three seconds remaining. Second down to the offense in search of six yards. It's Gurley, and he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. And we have free football over time. Here we go, my friend. And the way this game played out, this is exactly how it should end, going to overtime because neither one got an advantage today. It's a little teaching moment here. Overtime rules. Remind us how this goes, partner. Okay, so in the past, we had sudden death. First team to score wins, but no longer. Now, if the team receives the ball, scores a touchdown, they win the game. If they kick a field goal, though, or don't score, the other team gets a possession. And after both teams get a possession, then we're into sudden death. First team to score wins the game. This is fielded at the goal line. Spinning away. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. It's now, except for their first drive here in overtime, and this is where the crowd can really become a factor. They've had to battle it all day, but I know what you're saying. In overtime, 
that gets double, doesn't it? At least, because now the crowd really wants to be involved and help their team, and that first drive can dictate the whole thing because they know if this team takes it downfield and scores a touchdown, it's game over. And it's been loud in here so far. Throwing now, Ryan on first down. They'll set up the screen for Freeman. Devontae Freeman, they're not going to get him. Touchdown, Falcons. A partner, a great game that we got to see and making it extra special. Not only did I get four quarters with you in this one, I got some overtime, a little whipped cream on top. Look at you, trying to make this whole thing palatable. I just want you to pay for my meal later. Hey, you really just wanted four quarters <laughs> what you wanted. But how much fun was that? We had that type of a game where we got us to overtime, and then we get the dramatic ending to finish things off as well. What a game. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. With that, we say good night from Los Angeles.